pastor handed her a jar along with this explanation. Each of these 936 pennies represents one week you have with your child from birth to 18. Suddenly that jar felt a whole lot heavier in her hands. Visualizing their son's childhood, she and her husband knew that they needed to be intentional with the time they've been given. Psalm 90 verse 12 says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Erin and her husband have three sons, a daughter and a beautiful baby waiting to meet them in heaven. They own three businesses while homeschooling their kids. They call the Rocky Mountains of Colorado home, hiking, camping, fishing, hunting, running, biking, writing books, and drinking coffee to be able to do all that. Sometimes they even fit in some math. Books fill every spare corner of their home. Man, we didn't move out to the country again, I tell you what. I'm Tina Griffin, this is the Counterculture Mom Show, and we are talking about parenting on the prairie with author and speaker, Erin Lynham. Erin, how you doing, girl? Good, I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me today. Yes, out of all the things that I just rattled off of what your family does on pretty much a day-to-day -day basis, no wonder you need the coffee. Oh, so much coffee. I actually just finished another cup. <laughs> uh, and I love how you said, if you have any extra time, you'll throw in some math. And yeah, it, here and there. <laughs> exactly. Is that pretty much how you do your homeschooling? Is it pretty much outdoors, God's creation? How do you work your homeschooling days? Absolutely. So I guess there's a lot of things to call it, but we would probably fall under life schooling. Uh, so we we teach a whole lot through nature study and time outdoors and involving our kids in our businesses. And we just have conversations that work in history and social studies and math kind of in a natural way. I love that. This is one show I cannot let my kids watch or they will be like, Mom, can you please do that? And not a Becca online all day long. We do get outdoors. But the yeah. picture we're about to show the audience today, man, oh, man, my kids are going to be jealous they don't live where you live. We are just south of Nashville in a subdivision. We miss our six acres we had in Missouri where we had a zip line. We went swimming. We were next to a lake. Um, do you got any neighbors moving out next door? How's it look? No. We actually, we just moved into our current house six months ago, and we've heard that no one moves out of this neighborhood. In 13 years, we were the third turnover. So I think once people find it, they kind of stay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to GPS you, find, find out where you're at. <laughs> Come, Girl. have a cup of coffee. <laughs> Absolutely, I'll have a couple. And the kids will be screaming outdoors together. And all of our kids are the same ages too, so it's, it's kind of neat. Now you are a certified master naturalist, sharing the truth of God's word through the wonders of his creation. You're also the author of 936 Pennies. I tell you what, girl, these pages are crumpled. They're battered, torn. I got to get a new copy, but I love your book, 936 Pennies, Discovering the Joy of Intentional Parenting and Unshakable Equipping Today's Kids with a Resilient Faith Rooted in the Wonder of Creation. Erin, you have a beautiful video about making time count with your kids. I want to first open up this entire episode so people can see exactly what that book's about. My name is Erin Lynham, and I am the author of 936 Pennies, Discovering the Joy of Intentional Parenting. My husband, Grayson, and I live in northern Colorado with our three boys, Ezekiel, Allison, and Wayland. We thought we were done after three boys. Our house can get pretty loud and messy and chaotic, uh, but then we got our little surprise, our cherry on top, Aurora Jane. The heart behind 936 pennies happened a few years back when our second son was a year and a half old, and our pastor gave us a gift, and it was a jar of 936 pennies. And he told us that every penny in that jar represents one week that we have with our child between birth and 18. And he challenged us to remove a penny every week to remind us that the time is fleeting and our days are numbered. Our first task was to remove 72 pennies. Ellison was already a year and a half old. And I know that we as parents feel it so often, that these days go by so quickly. And it's hard to think about that, to realize that, and to feel like we can't get that time back. And so what we ended up doing was setting up a second jar so that now every week we move a penny over from the first jar to the second jar so that we don't look at that first jar and feel so overwhelmed by the time already gone 
but instead we look at that second jar as it's building up and we realize we are investing in their eternity, in their story, in their legacy, and that made all the difference for us. The book is rooted in Psalm 9012. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And that was my aim in the book. How do we become more present so that we make the most of the moments and the opportunities that are all around us every single day? How can counting time, numbering our days, moving a penny over every week, how can that change the words that we speak to our children and the words that we choose to hold back? How can that change how we interact with our spouse and how we make our marriage the center of our family? How can it influence how we lean into time to steward it well, to enjoy it fully, to remember it completely? Counting time changes how we live. We stop throwing our days to the wind to see what catches, and instead we grasp them. We take hold of them. And God, He is always a penny ahead of us. He sees the whole picture and He brings beauty out of these days. Who would have thought a simple penny? I could not watch that before I had you on because I knew this was going to happen right here. <laughs> Um, I am so glad you set up that second jar to collect the pennies that you were taking out of the first jar. But when I first got a hold of your book, I want to say it probably has already been a decade ago. I was out camping, grabbed your book, and I remember bawling within the first five, five or six pages. I've got four kids, 13 and under, and it seems like it went by in a blink of an eye. And uh, it's so important, simple penny, just visualizing that coming out of one jar, going into the next of how little time you got left, how you're going to spend it and investing. Absolutely. That's one way of looking at investing. What made you want to write that book? Did you get a lot of moms that said, hey, I saw this thing you threw up on Instagram about some penny jar. Tell us more. How did that get birthed? I had written, I was doing some blogging at the time when we were given our penny jar and it was just a hobby of mine. I mostly did food blogging. And I wrote up a little story about the penny jar and no one read my blog at that time. It was like my mom and a few of her friends read my blog and I put it out there. And the next day there was 10,000 hits on my website <laughs> and I thought it was broken. I'm like digging around the back end, like something's broken. I've been hacked. But within two months, there was over a million views of that story. And oh it was just shared God. across the world. Yeah. So that got my and my husband's attention that this is a message that not only we, but every parent is hungry for. Like, like you said, like we feel that time slipping through our fingers. Even watching that video, that was filmed four years ago. And that little baby girl, my daughter, is four years old now. And just watching that, like it hits me again. It goes so quickly. And so at that point, seeing the reaction, we just started praying and laying it before the Lord. And in faith, I began writing and attending writers conferences and just figuring out, okay, what would it look like to publish a book? And then God just took it from there. <laughs> I'm so glad you did. It was such a good book. I can't remember how many people told me about this book, but it was a lot. I'm like, that's it. I'm getting the book. Can you give us some tips on how we can be more intentional with our kids without doing all the right things? Yeah, for sure. I think the danger right now is with this high tech world where we're all just absorbed in media, the pressure is to do all the things. Like I know if I'm scrolling through Instagram and I see all these ideas and activities and parents even sharing what they're doing, my first reaction is to compare and to feel like, oh man, that's I should probably do that and I should probably do that. And I honestly think that that's a lie from Satan that he puts in our minds like we have to do everything because then we don't really do anything very well. And so I think that the media can be toxic in that way. And a lot of times when I talk about toxicity in our lives, I use the visual of monarch butterflies and milkweed. So monarch butterflies are what's known as a specialized species they only lay their eggs on one plant, milkweed. 
but milkweed is actually toxic to insects. When they bite into it, it lets out this sap that glues their mouths shut and they starve. So why would a butterfly lay its eggs there? But the monarch caterpillars have learned that when they sense that toxicity, they go back to the vein of the leaf and they gnaw through it and cut it off at its source. And I think the same is with the media. Like when we realize, even if it's well-intentioned posts, if we realize that it is causing this discontent in our souls, like cut it off at its source. And then we have this healthy, this healthy atmosphere in our minds and in our hearts and in our homes where we can begin being intentional. I, I absolutely love that. And even the time invested, even if it's a decent post, like what you're talking about, a lot of time invested in that, that as you're wasting 30 minutes to post the perfect picture, you could have been hanging out with your kids of the picture that you're posting. Mm -hmm. For um, sure. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just wild. Here's a great question that I can see a lot of parents asking time and time again, how can people teach their kids about God if they're not too familiar with the Bible? Yeah, so this goes back also to just being intentional with our time. Instead of doing all the things, I think it's important that we focus on even one connection that we can make every day. And so a lot of the time for me, that is just opening the word with my children. And I think it's important to realize we don't have to have theology degrees or training in the Bible. Like, I truly believe that God's word is living and active and does not return void. And so with my kids, a lot of the time, we just open up God's word and I'll use a children's Bible or a easy to understand translation like New Century Version or a New International Version. We have been reading through the book of John because it just shares the gospel so beautifully. Yeah. And we just take a chunk, not even a chapter, just a section of scripture. And my oldest son reads it and then we just discuss. If my children have questions that I don't know how to answer, I just tell them like, I'm okay with that. And I just tell them, you know what? I'm not sure. Let's go figure that out. Because I think it's important that our kids see that we also are students of the word. Oh, that's good. All right. More with making our pennies count after a word from our sponsor. Anxiety is at an all time high, causing restlessness and paralyzing panic attacks. There is hope, a revolutionary product that brings healing and relieves symptoms of anxiety by harnessing the body's own electrical fields in conjunction with a pre-programmed patch. The Restore Patch is an all-natural, drug-free, wearable patch, and it's risk-free with a 60-day money-back guarantee. Check out RestorePatch.com and get 10% off using promo code TINA at checkout. Stop feeling overwhelmed, fearful, and anxious with Restore Patch. All right, Erin, you have an amazing free devotional guide on teaching your child who God is and how much he loves them. The link is going to be in the show notes, everyone. If you want to download this wonderful resource, just go to counterculturemom.com, click on this episode right here with Erin, and then surrounding this episode, you will see a link to get this devotional. Can you explain? We can all find on erinlinum.com. I love your unique last name. I'm going to spell it out for everybody here. It is E R Y N. L Y N U M dot com. And then if you click on, is it devotional here, girl, or, or people can get it? Can you navigate us on where to go to get this devotional? Yep. So if you go to the main website, there's a button at the top that says free, and that will actually take you to all of my resources, including the God of Wonders devotional. So there's several resources on there that you can download. Okay. So can you go through a couple of these resources for people tuning in? Yeah, for sure. So the God of Wonders devotional is five lessons for teaching your child who God is and how he loves them. My passion is to combine my degree in biblical studies with my certification as a master naturalist, because I believe that God communicates two ways. And this is going back to our Bible college days, Tina, through special revelation, which is God's word and natural revelation, which is God's creation. Romans 1 20 says that his invisible attributes, his divine nature are made clear through what is seen in creation. Yep. And so in that devotional, I take visuals from nature and teach theology who God is through them. And you can read that to your child. That is fantastic. So look to the hills. God loves us forever. Look to the skies. God gives us everything we need. Look to the fields, God is our light and life. Look to the waters, God has a great design for our lives. And look to the seasons, God grows us through change. That is fantastic. E-R-Y-N-L-Y-N-U-M.com. That is fantastic content. How did you come up with that idea? I just, God has spoken to me personally so much through nature 
and my time out in his creation. And as my family and I began spending more time out in creation, I just realized like this is God's classroom and he's given me so many visuals to communicate to my children who he is. And kids are so visual. They just take in everything through their eyes and their touch and their smell and all of their senses. So if we can surround them with God's creation, they can reconnect those dots between creation and creator. I love that, which absolutely explains why you homeschool, because they can be outside learning throughout the day instead of 10 hours inside of a crammed classroom and now six feet apart, mask on and everything else. It's like yeah. everything anti God, really, after what you just yeah. said. Yeah. So how can someone lead their family in living intentionally and by their values? Yeah, so the values was a huge piece for our family. Several years ago, my husband and I took a trip. It was actually our baby moon when I was pregnant with our third son. Mm -hmm. And we spent a few days in the Ozark Mountains and we created a family values list. And we started with just a brain dump. We asked ourselves the question, what do, what do we want out of life? How, what do we feel God calling us to? And we just wrote down everything we could think of. And then we started narrowing down that list until we got to our core family values. And so some of ours are exploring outside in creation, sharing the gospel in our home, whether by inviting people in or sharing the gospel with our children or each other or ourselves. Work hard, work smart is another one. And then do life together. We believe in doing everything as a team, as a family. And once you have those family values in place, it's a grid work. So every opportunity that comes to your family is lined up against those values, which are lined up against God's word. And it makes it clear like, yes, we say yes to this or no, that's not for us. That is so good. And that goes along with the pennies in that jar the penny stretches further if you say no to the stuff that doesn't matter. Ooh, yes. I'm, I'm liking that's how, so good. <laughs> I'm liking how you think. I'm all about investment here. You got to talk to me. This is this is Tina's two cents here. You could tell what's going through my blood all the time. Work hard, work smart. I want to know what that means. Fill me in. So I write books and I also do a lot of marketing and I probably work about 25 to 30 hours a week. And my propensity is like, get it all done, work, 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 don't stop, don't rest. And so we as a family really, again, going back to our values, decide, does this work make sense for our family? Is it good for our family? Can we include our kids? And so it's being faithful in the work that God has given us. Like I think scripture is full of those reminders. He calls us to work. He created us to do good work but then being smart about that work. This year we actually started Sabbathing and we have Sabbathed every Saturday this year. We stay home, we don't get in the car. We, If we work, it's like around the yard and work that fills our souls. And so we work really hard all week long and then we rest really hard on Saturday. So I'm gonna fly out like on a Friday night. Does that sound good? Oh yeah, so we can have people over. This <laughs> this past Sabbath, I had my friend with her four little girls over and we just played outside all day long. So come Sabbath with us. <laughs> I have got to talk to you at a private session after this because I put in way too many hours every week, way too many hours. It's something I definitely have to get back, you know, get the pendulum back in the middle part again. And granted the last month has been nuts. I'm speaking on a big four week speaking tour and I had to do a lot wow. of recording before I left in hopes that I'm not taking any recording equipment with me, but I am not working smart. I'm working hard, but not smart. I got to talk to you after this episode. Girl, you have another amazing resource on your website. And this, this one's all about identifying and living by your family values. Can people download what you just talked about that you did with your family? Yeah, absolutely. So after my husband and I wrote our list, actually that list led to our move to Colorado wow. because the crazy thing is, and I'll, I'll answer your question here too. The crazy thing is we wrote out the list and we realized there was a huge chasm between what we wanted and our values and how we were living. And so we actually moved, like we packed up, sold our home and moved to Colorado to be able to live according to those values. And after that happened, we started speaking on it. So my husband and I actually got to do a bit of a speaking tour together and walk people through this process. And in that process, we created this resource together that walks people through discussions and questions to answer. And we made it relevant also to single parents. 
so that if you're not going through this with a spouse, okay, get a close friend, get a mentor, get someone who cares about you and your children, and you can walk through these discussion points. And at the end of it, you will know your family values and how you want to live. It's nuts that you just said that because looking over your notes before I had you jump on, knowing full well what this baby had to offer, okay? The book, people, you got to pick up a copy. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. 936 pennies, discovering the joy of intentional parenting. I saw some of your resources and I'm like, I know full well if my husband and I would get together and write this list. We had a list like 10 years ago and that was like not die, change all the kids' diapers. I mean, the needs were different. <laughs> if we can survive through today, we got another win. So now that they're older, they're helping out around the house. We're living life together. I know that our list, if we came up with one, would not match where we are currently living. And it's nuts you said that because it's exactly what I thought about one hour ago. One hour ago. <laughs> not that we have to move out of state, but even if we got some farmland, got the zip line back up, we want to live near a creek, we want to have animals. I grew up on a farm. Some of that hopefully is still in my blood even through the Hollywood years. But this guide, I have to download myself. But everybody tuning in, you have to go to our website, erinlinum.com. It'll be in the show notes, everybody, counterculturemom.com, to click on these resources links or go to straight to our website. But this is a free resource, a guide to identify and live by your family values. Can you tell us, girl, what they will get with this free guide? Yeah, so it helps you to... So it starts by just giving ideas of different values, like a whole list of them. And then you go through and you star the ones that just like spark your spirit, if you will. Like, I, I think that God works in our spirits like that, that something just resonates like, yeah, that's important to me. And then you do that separately, whether you're doing it with your spouse or with a mentor or close friend. And then you compare your lists and see if there's any overlap. And that can really tell you like, okay, this, this is something I need to focus on. So really it's, it's this discussion on paper that helps you to think through what's important to you and your family. And at the end of it, you have your top five family values and you can start living according to those and seeing like, okay, this is not represented in our life. And here's one step I can take to make that a value in our life. Yeah. All right. We're gonna find out how to get your goods right after commercial break. Approximately half of all kids are exposed to porn by accident. However, you can help your child quit porn or never even start by having accountability. The Covenant Eyes app monitors your child's devices while the Victory app gives you a comprehensive feed of their device activity and alerts you if explicit material is accessed. Get Covenant Eyes free for 30 days by texting the word VICTORY to the number 66866. That's VICTORY to 66866. Let's keep our kids porn free. Thank you for helping us out on this. I know that if we ditched a lot of screen time and tech gadgets in the home, we can make that possible. What are your tips for tech gadgets in the home? Yeah, so dealing with tech and getting rid of some of it is actually the number one way we can reclaim some of those pennies. When I was writing the book, I wanted to look at how much time the average child spends with a device or screen. So I pulled together all this research and found that out of the 936 weeks that we have with our kids, 205 waking weeks, almost 22% of their childhood what? is given to a screen or device. Yeah. So the average child spends six minutes outside a day and six hours with a device. Oh, and I'm a mom. Gosh. Right. I don't need more guilt about screen time. None of us parents do. But you actually said this uh, a few episodes ago on the pro-life series. You were talking about how knowledge is powerful, and I totally believe in that. So once I knew those numbers, had to change how I was parenting, had to change how I was dealing with the device. So a couple of things I do now is I practice what my friend Arlene Pelican calls the swivel. If I'm working on my computer or my phone, which is important, my work is important, I believe God has called me to it. If my child comes to me or my husband comes to me, I put the device down and I physically turn toward them because I want to model to them that they, people, are more important than screens. Another thing we do in our house a lot is before we turn on a screen, and they do not get screens every day, we have uh, weaned them down um, over time because that's what it takes new habits practice but a lot of times we'll do okay have you created something cleaned something and played outside okay now you can watch a show I want them to get those important things into their day before they sit in front of a screen 
keep at it. And I'm going to be doing uh, some flights out your direction. I'll make sure I land on a Friday and absolutely yes. have to stay with your family on a Saturday because that's your time down, right? We get to relax, jump in the lake. What do y'all got going on over there? Yeah, yeah. So we do live by lake so we can walk to the lake, go out on the boats. We have a trail right by our house. We can go fishing, hang in the backyard. Like we just, we read. That's actually when I find time to read. We were talking about just such a hard time as moms finding time to read. Yeah. Ever since we started Sabbath, I'm working through several books a month because we're just reading. That's what we have to do on Saturday. Excellent tips. Share it with some parents that are out there today. We've got one life. Let's make it count. You're phenomenal. Keep at it. And I'll see you sooner than later.